In this lecture, we're going to talk about vectors. So vectors are one of the most fundamental objects in linear algebra, and they're actually going to allow us to view linear systems in a totally new way than we did before. So there's a new geometric interpretation that we're going to introduce today. Um, so first of all, what is a vector? Well, a vector is nothing more than um, than an, uh, an ordered list. It's an ordered list of numbers. And let's uh, let's say we're going to work with real numbers. Okay, so it's an ordered list of real numbers. The notation for a vector is uh, there, well. There are two ways you can do it. You can either um, you can either draw a V in a bold font, but that's going to be hard for me to do, so I'm going to use the alternative uh, way of indicating a vector, uh, which is with this symbol above the letter. So, so this is a vector. So this is a list of numbers, so it looks like this. Um, v1, V2, oh, how many should I have? Let's say, uh, let's leave it a little bit uh, open. So let's say we have N numbers, okay? And each of these Vs, uh, the number of Vs, these are elements of R. You might have seen this symbol before. This just means um, this just means is an element of. Okay. Probably don't want to have to write is an element of constantly. So mathematicians uh, use this symbol instead. Um, okay, there's another way we can write a vector. We can write it as a column instead. And that's actually what we're going to do most of the time. So we can write it as a column, v1, v2, dot, 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 all the way down to vn. Okay. So this is the row vector, and this is the column vector. And, um... And we can think of these uh, vectors as living in a space. Uh, so the space of all vectors is actually an example of a vector space. Um, so the space of all vectors um, with n components, let's say. So we have to fix a number of components. And that space is called R, indicating real numbers, real entries, um, R n, like this. So looks like R to the nth power. Okay. Um, okay, here's an example. So the vector 1 square root of 2, 0. What space does this belong to? Um, so this is an element of, okay, what could I have written instead of that? I could have just used this symbol, right? So I could have said, this is an element of, well, it's an element of R3. Okay, because we have three components. Um, okay, is it an element of R2? Good question, right? Because we see there's a zero in the third component. Um, well, the answer is no, right? Because we've already fixed three components in our vector, okay? So if we wanted it to be an element of R2, we need to create a new vector with only two components. So this one is an element of R2. Uh, but this is an element of R3. Um, okay. So um, within this uh, space, Rn, what can we do with vectors? Uh, well, we can do two things. 
well, more than two things, but there are two basic operations we can do. So the first one is we can add vectors. And the second one is we can uh, multiply a vector by a, uh, what's called a scalar to scale the vector. Scalar is just a number. Um, so scalar is just an element of um, the real numbers. R. Okay. Um, let's see how this works. So, so we're going to let, you've, you've probably encountered this before, um, but let's suppose U is, um, let's get used to doing everything as columns. Okay. So U is a vector with, um, with N elements. Let's take another, so we're within Rn, right? So we have n elements in all of our vectors that I'm going to write down now. Um, v is an element of Rn as well. Okay. Where do all these little numbers uh, ui and vi live? Well, they're just real numbers, right? They live in the real numbers. Um, okay, so we have two, uh, we have two vectors. What does the sum look like? Uh, U plus V. Well, it's just what you'd expect. So you get a new vector, uh, you add each of the components. And uh, you, you immediately can see why we, we really need the same number of um, entries in all of our vectors. That's why we're really thinking of this as a fixed space that we're working on. Okay, so all the elements in the space have to have uh, the same number of components and all the way down to you know un plus vn okay and what does scalar multiplication look like so here we have uh, just one scalar i'll call it c times uh or yeah let's say c times uh u well it's gonna be c times the vector like this, which is again another vector. And how do I get this vector? I multiply every component by C. So C times U1. And we can do this because C is a real number. So yeah, this C is a real number. Okay. And then all of these components are real numbers. So we just have real numbers times real numbers. Okay. So that's how you do the two basic operations. Um, okay, so uh, there's a name for this. So with uh, this addition, this addition rule, and a scalar multiplication, this r to the n is called a vector space. It's an example of a vector space. Okay. This is a concept we're going to see um, in more detail later in the class. But um, essentially, uh, mathematically, a vector space can be anything where you have vectors. I'm, I'm saying vectors with air quotes. Uh, vectors can be any object. Um, any kind of object, as long as you can define an addition and a scalar multiplication. Okay, so that's what makes it a vector space. You have an addition and a scalar multiplication. And if you add any two vectors, uh, you get another vector in the space. Um, I should also mention there's one special vector that we actually give a name to. So there's there's a special vector. Um, called the zero vector. That's just what you'd think. It's a bunch of zeros. So we denote it actually by a special symbol, zero with uh, the symbol above it, meaning it's a vector. And it's just the all zeros vector. Okay. This is another thing we need in a vector space. Um, so there are n zeros for an Rn. Okay, great. Um, 
I mean, I suppose we should do one example of you know, using these operations. So um, let's do three times, what is uh, three times uh, this vector minus this vector. The second vector I write down, it better have the same number of components, right? So you know, I have two components. So what is this? Well, wait a second, you might say. I, I, I said how to add vectors. I didn't say there was a subtraction. Um, but what is subtraction, really? It's just adding the opposite. Right? So minus 1 times this vector is the same as plus negative 1. Negative 1 is now a scalar times this vector. Right? So I just have addition and scalar multiplication. Um, OK, and what is this going to be? Well, I multiply through the 3, and let's multiply through the negative 1. And we get, uh, what is this, 5, negative 20. OK. Um, you might have seen uh, vectors in physics before, so I just want to mention that. So in physics, a vector is is sort of actually is an arrow with um so so it has magnitude and direction. I just want to talk briefly um, about you know how the math math mathematical definition is maybe a little bit different. So a vector is magnitude and direction. Um, in physics, you you almost think of a vector as so it's a little arrow like this, and you can think of it as a movable object. You can move it around. And so if you have a vector up here, and it has the same magnitude and direction as this one, you think of it as the same vector. In math, that's not true. In math, you, you think of all vectors as being fixed at... So you can still think of them as arrows, but you think of this part being fixed at the origin. So in math, all vectors are fixed at the origin. Okay, so in R2, for example, let's say this is my origin, 0, 0. That's the 0 vector, right? Um, the vector 3, uh, let's do 2, 3. It looks like this. It sh you can think of it as this point right here. So you should think of vectors as points, okay? Not arrows that you can move around. But they're, you can think of them as arrows, but still, um, the base of the arrow has to be rooted at the origin, okay? Um, okay, so that said, it's still useful to think of them as these little arrows sometimes. And that's because, um, so, um, there's a geometric meaning for, you know, well, let's see both of them. So adding, adding vectors and scalar multiplying and scaling vectors. Okay, um, and you've probably seen this before, so let's say I have a vector, and remember I'm thinking of, I'm, I'm thinking of all the vectors being rooted at zero, so here's zero. Okay, so this is the vector. Again, you can think of the vector just as this point here. It's one comma three, and then let's say I have the vector um, what's this vector? It's 2 comma 1. How do I add them? So let's say this one is u and this one is v. Well, I add them by adding the components, but geometrically, what, how you can think of that is um, you can sort of take this vector, move it up here. So I'm putting the tail of the vector on the tip of the other one. And where I end up is the sum. So where do I end up here? It's 3, 4. Okay. And then 3, 4 is this vector here. Okay, so that's how you add vectors. Um, how do you scale vectors? Well, again, let's say I have, um, let's say I have a vector. Here's 0, 0. I'm thinking my origin is fixed. And then... Uh, Here's the vector 1, 2. So that's my u. 
Oh yeah, so this three comma four is u plus v. What's uh, two u going to look like? Well, multiplying by a scalar is just like scaling the vector. That's why it's called scalar multiplication, right? So this is two comma four, that's two u. What does negative u look like? That looks like I actually reflect it the other way. So here's negative u, which is um, uh, negative one comma negative two. Okay. So that's what scalar multiplication looks like. Um, and again, you know, subtraction, you interpret as adding the negative. Okay, so you just make the scalar here negative. Um, great, okay. So this might have been a review for, for many of you. So um, let's, let's go ahead and move along. Um, I'd like to talk now about linear combinations of vectors. Linear combinations of vectors this is an extremely important concept. So what do I mean by a linear combination of vectors? Okay, let's make a general definition. So, so if, um, so here's a definition. So if, um, uh, yeah, so u1, u2, um, all the way up to u, um, m r. Um, well, I'm going to, I was going to write r elements of, but let's use our symbol, right? So if these are all elements of r n, we might say, wait a second, doesn't that have to be the same as that? Well, no, uh, R, Rn is saying that, uh, sorry, I should, <laughs> I should put the uh, symbols indicating these are vectors, right? So what is this saying for U1, for example, to belong to Rn is saying that this vector has N components, right? So, so you know, I'm thinking of U1, the vector as being, you know, number U1, number U2, all the way down to number U, um, sorry, u11, u12, all the way down to u1n, right? So this is itself a vector of n components. This vector has n components. This vector has n components. They're all elements of Rn. But I could have any number of vectors I want, right, in this space, Rn, okay? Um, and let's take some scalars. So, and um, c1 c2 all the way up to let's take the same number of scalars as vectors where do these scalars live they live in r right they're real numbers um, then an expression any expression of the form c1 times u1 plus c2 times u2 I'm scaling the vectors by these coefficients. Uh, dot, 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 plus uh, cm times um is called a linear combination. It's called a linear combination. Of the vectors um, u1 up to um. Okay, here's an example of a linear combination. All right, so this is my u1, here's my u2. Here it just so happens that we have the same number of, of, uh, of, of elements in the, in the vector as we do vectors, but that's not necessary. But here's uh, c1 times u1 you know, plus c2 times u2. Right. Actually, yeah, here's my C, my real C2. Okay, so that's the linear combination. Um, linear combinations come up all the time. Um, let, let's do a sort of a real world um, example um, where linear combination naturally comes up. We'll, we'll refer back to this example uh, as, we, as we go maybe. So, um, so here's an example. Um, 
do an example with food. Um, so suppose um, almonds contain certain nutritional values. So um, say 12 grams fat, um, five, five grams of carbs, and six grams of protein uh, per serving. And let's say uh, bananas contain um, zero grams fat. Technically it's maybe 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, but um, I'm rounding here. Um, bananas are almost all carbs, so 16 grams carbs and one gram protein uh, per serving, which is, I guess, per banana. Um, okay, well then, how much, here's a question, how much of each nutrient we're going to think of this as a vector problem. So how much of each nutrient will uh, you get from Um, two servings of um, almonds and three bananas. Okay. Well, this is a math problem you could have done in elementary school, but um, let's try to interpret this in the language of vectors. Okay. Um, what 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 are our vectors going to be? So let's actually. This is an interesting idea. So let's say we we take the almond data, okay, and we turn that into a vector in three-dimensional space. So we're viewing just this list of, you know, this list of um, nutritional data as a point in a space. Uh, so we have 12, 5, 6. Okay. And then for the bananas, we're going to do the same thing. 0 grams fat, um, 16 grams carb, and 1 gram protein. Okay, well, how can you figure out how much of each nutrient you will get? Well, uh, let's stick with this vector notation. So, so what we want to do is we want to multiply all of these, right, by 2, because we have two servings of almond. You can do that by just doing uh, a scalar, you know, 2 times this vector. And I'm going to do 3 times this vector. So I have three bananas, and I'm going to add them. And what do we get? Well, we get, uh, let me write this, 2 times 12. Um, I'll just do both steps at once. So uh, 2 times 12 plus 3 times 0. Here we get 2 times 5 plus 3 times 16. And here we get 2 times 6 plus 3 times 1. Okay. And then whatever we get there, I guess we should do it out. So... 24, um, it says 48 plus 10 is 58, uh, 58, and 12 plus 3 is 15. Um, okay, so here's our linear combination, right? So we can, we can view the problems like this as linear combinations of vectors. Um, great. We'll come back to this problem in a second. Next thing I would like to ask is... Um, when is one vector a linear combination of others? Okay, so here's a question. Is, um, is the vector 3, negative 4 a linear combination? Of these vectors. Uh, let's do, um, 1, 0, and 1, 1. OK, uh, wh what does that mean? Um, that means, i.e., um, can we find C1 and C2 such that um, uh, C1 times this first vector plus C2 times the second vector equals 
3, negative 4. Okay. Let's solve this one geometrically. Okay, so here's, um, how should we do this? Um, yeah, so here's zero, zero. Where's the vector three, negative four? That's just this point here, right? So here's three, negative four. I'm gonna plot the vectors one, zero and one, one. So here's one, zero, here's one, one. So can I multiply this vector by something and multiply this vector by something and then maybe add them in order to get down to this point here? And you might say, first of all, wait, that's impossible, right? Because they're both sort of pointing this way, right? How can I get down here? But you have to remember these can be negative, right? These, these can be negative numbers also, okay? Or it could be zero. Um, they can be any real numbers. Um, so let's see if we can do it. Well. Let's keep in mind, we can also go in this direction if we want, right? If we make this one negative. Okay, do you see how to do it in this picture? Well, I think what I can do is I can go out, uh, I can scale this one. How, how far do I wanna scale it? I think I wanna scale it all the way out to here. I wanna scale that one out to there. And then I wanna add a negative multiple of this one, and that'll take me down to here, remember the geometric meaning for adding vectors? So I can get a negative multiple of that one. Um, but if I wanna add that to this one, I pretend I'm picking it up and putting it here. So I wanna get down to there. So what is this vector I just drew in here? It's, uh, it's, um, uh, it's four times this one. Right, so here's one comma one, one comma zero. This blue vector I drew here is, um, well, what did I do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's um, seven times, you know, one comma zero. And then how far down did I have to go? I had to do negative four times uh, one comma one. Okay. Cool. Um, so, uh, so yes. Um, C1 is, uh, what is C1? C1 is seven and C2 is negative four. Okay. Um, well, how do we do this kind of problem in general? So, um, you might see where I'm going with this already. Um, let, let me do one other quick example. So, so, so here's another example. Can we get to pi E, um, E the number E. So is this a linear combination? Of, um, let's do one, zero, and um, this time I'm gonna do zero, one. Okay. Well, I have one zero and zero one. That's kind of like my origin here and pointed there is one zero. Here's zero one. You might say, how on earth can I get to pi e, right? Uh, by using this, but you have to keep in mind, right? We can choose any, any numbers as our coefficients, including real numbers, right? So there's actually a very easy way to get pi e. Do you see what it is? We can write pi e as Well, I go, I do pi multiples of this one, right? And then I need to do e multiples of this one. And that equals pi e, right? If you add this out, if you add these two together. Okay, so here's my C1, uh, my C1 uh, let's call this V1, and my C2, V2. Okay, so you can take the coefficients to be real numbers. Um, any real numbers, right? So no problem. Okay, let's talk in general about how to do this kind of problem. Um, okay, let's make it harder. So we're not, um, so here's a harder example. 
Now we're going to be in, um, in three-dimensional space, so in R3. Before we were in two-dimensional space. So I want to know, is this vector 3, 2, 0, is this a linear combination? of, um, I can put as many vectors as I want, but I'll put, um, I'll, I'll give you maybe two vectors. So one, zero, two, and um, one, negative one, four. Okay, meaning what? What do we mean by that? Are there real numbers C1 and C2 such that uh, C1 times this first vector, 1, 0, 2, plus C2 times the second vector, 1, negative 1, 4, is going to equal uh, 3, 2, 0. Is that possible to do? Okay, um, this one is a bit harder, right? It's tough to visualize because now what, what kind of space are we in? We're in three-dimensional space. So these vectors are, you know, somehow we have some vector pointing this way, maybe some vector pointing this one. Wait, this is in 3D space. Now we have like three axes here. And we want to know, you know, is, you know, maybe there's some other vector pointing out here and we want to know, is this one, can you get to this one by adding up these two? We're going to think more, much more about this geometric meaning later. Let's talk about how to solve this algebraically. It's going to turn out, turn out to be a familiar problem, actually. And to do that, well, let's just multiply this side all out, uh, or multiply through by the scalars and then add. So I have um, C1 times 1 plus C2 times 1. So I just, I'm just going to get 1C1 one plus 1C2. One and I have C1 times 0. plus, uh, I guess, minus C2 times 1. And then here I have uh, C1 times 2 plus, uh, plus C2 times 4. I just did this by multiplying through the C1, multiplying through the C2, and then adding the vectors. Right? So I get this. Is that equal to this? And by the way, what do we mean when two vectors are equal? We mean all the components are equal, right? So what do we mean? We mean 1C1 plus 1C2 equals 3, 0C1 minus 1C2 equals 2, and 2C1 plus 4C2 equals 0. Well, what did I just write down here? Yes, you guessed it, right? This is a system of linear equations. System of linear equations. Okay, so somehow this question, is a vector a linear combination of some other vectors? That's just a system of linear equations in disguise. Okay? How do we solve a system of linear equations? Well, we know how to do that, right? So um, let's, let's solve it really quickly. We put the, uh, all the coefficients in this augmented matrix. 0, negative 1, 2. Uh, 2, 4, 0. So there's my aug augmented matrix. Let's go ahead and uh, do the Gaussian elimination. I'm not going to write the steps, uh, but um, what do I need to do? I need to subtract two of the first row from the last row. So we get this. And almost done, right? What do I need to do now? I have a pivot. Uh, this is looking to be a pivot uh, soon, as long as I get rid of this uh, two. So first two rows, I'm just going to write right down. And this one I'm going to add two copies of the second row. So I get a zero and I get a uh, negative two. Okay. Oh, uh, well, can you see how many solutions is this going to have? So a pivot, a pivot. Um, ooh, look at, look at this last row. 
I've removed all zeros to the left of this red line and then a something that's not zero. What does that mean? That means it was an inconsistent system. Inconsistent, right? Which means there are no numbers C1 and C2 that express this as a linear combination of these two. So what's the answer to this question? Is this a linear combination of these two? No. So, so, so no. Um, this is not a linear combination. of the given vectors. Okay. Um, great. Okay. So uh, l let's try the opposite now. So, so in other words, we had a vector problem and we wrote that uh, this vector equation here as a system of linear equations. Here's another example where we're going to, let's try to uh, get some practice doing the opposite. Uh, so let's write the system um, well let's just do two equations x1 minus x2 minus 2x3 equals uh, let's say 4 and then um, 2x1 minus uh, minus just leave out x2 minus 3x3 equals uh, 1 so let's write this in vector form what do we mean by that? Hmm, okay. We have to sort of do this example backwards. So notice that these coefficients of the vectors, the scalars in this vector equation here, are actually the variables in the linear system. So I'm going to try to do the same kind of thing. Oh, this should be an x1, by the way. So I'm going to write x1. See, I have x1 in, let me actually write in the numbers here. So I have x1 in both equations. So I'm going to take x1 to be my scalar, and I'm going to multiply it by the vector of coefficients here. So I have 1, 2. So a scalar x1 times 1, 2. And I have plus um, negative 1. Uh, ooh, I don't have an x2 down here, so I need to put a 0. Okay, uh, x2 again is my scalar. And then I have an x3 times uh, what vector? It's going to be negative two, negative three, okay? And that should equal the vector four, one. Okay, uh, you should verify this, multiply this out, right? Um, make sure that uh, we can get uh, four, one here. Or make sure that we get this system back. And again, this is now asking, is four comma one, is that a linear combination of these three vectors? So, so I just want to I want to emphasize something because because I think it's really cool. So this this is an equation. Uh, this is an equation in what space? What's well, an equation in R two, right? Do you recall our previous geometric interpretation for something like this? We have three variables. So in, previously. Uh, so this is a previous interpretation. Well, what are these uh, what are these equations describing? These are describing planes, right, in three dimensional space. So it's saying where do these planes in three D space intersect? Okay, this is a totally different but equally geometric question, right? So this is saying, where do these three vectors, or sorry, not where do these three vectors, but can I take linear combinations of these three vectors, okay, in two-dimensional space and end up with this vector, okay? So we have two completely different interpretations now for a system, uh, geometric interpretations for a system of equations. Um, Okay, and there's um, there's actually another convenient notation, um, but but first uh, there's one other thing I want to talk about. So, um, so here's another example. So we can also 
express um, the uh, solution to a linear system. Remember how sometimes we had infinitely many solutions and we, um, we had to uh, find a parameterization? So that's what I'm going to talk about. So we can, we can also express a solution to a linear system uh, in vector form. So here's an, here's an example from, um, from lecture two. We had a system. Um, we had a system of equations, and this was the solution. It was. It had five uh, variables. I want to do a slightly complicated example just to make sure you can do it in um, yeah, it's more complicated form. Um, so we had uh, we had x two and x five turned out to be free variables. So I called one of them s and one of them t. And then x four turned out to be the number five. X three turned out to be 2t plus 1, you could express it in terms of this. And then x1, you could express in terms of both free variables. So 6 plus s minus 8t. Okay. What do I mean write this in vector form? So I guess it would be a... Uh, okay, so this is something new over here. So x1, x2, x3, x4, X5, it will have five elements, right? So we're in five dimensional space. Okay, what do I do? Well, notice uh, I have T in common for a lot of these, right? And I have S in common for some of them. And I also have other terms, right? Constant terms. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a vector with just the constants. Uh, six, zero, one, five, zero. Right, those are just the constant terms. Then I have s terms. Right? S is my first parameter times um, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Do you see how I did that? Right, this is 1s, this is 1s, and I don't have s terms in the other, um, the other ones. And then I have t times. Uh, minus eight, zero, two, zero, one, right? Great, so this is my parametric solution in uh, vector form. Uh, so we're gonna be using um, this notation a lot going forward. Um, okay. Okay, now, uh, one of the most important ideas. So um, we're going to introduce uh, matrices, um, in particular vector, uh, a matrix times a vector. So this is the matrix matrix notation for a linear combination. It's a matrix notation. Um, let's suppose we have uh, V1, V2, up to V m in R, um, R n, and we have um, scalars. Okay. Some number of vectors in some dimensional space and uh, scalars. Then we write a linear combination C1, whenever we have a linear, linear combination, we can write it in this matrix form. And how do you do that? Well, I'm going to, I remember all my vectors are com column vectors, okay? I'll be super explicit if I'm ever talking about row vectors, but I'm assuming all my vectors are column vectors. So I'm going to just take all my vectors and put them as columns in this matrix. Okay, so V1 is the first column. V2 is the second column. How many columns do I have? I have M columns. And then, well, what have I not kept track of yet? My coefficients. So here's how I'm going to write them. I'm going to write this as this matrix times my coefficients. 
c1, c2. So I'm actually going to put my coefficients in a vector. So I'm doing two things here. Right, I'm packaging my coefficients in a column vector. But this is actually meaning c1 times this one, plus c2 times this one, etc. Uh, all the way down to cm times this one. Right? Uh, ooh, I should always be writing my uh, symbol on top of the vectors. Right? Um, okay, example, example time, right? So um, let's, do, let's do this one. Let's write this one as a matrix times a vector. So what is my matrix going to be? Well, the columns of my matrix are the vectors. So one, two, and I have negative one, zero, and I have negative two, negative three. Okay, that's what my matrix. And I'm going to do times. Notice this one is uh, is going to be taller, right? So I have x1, x2, x3. These are my scalars. And I want that to equal 4, 1. Okay, so again, what does this mean? It's just shorthand for x1 times this vector plus x2 times this vector plus x3 times this vector, okay? And you might have seen a matrix multiplication defined a little differently before. You might have seen it as you're taking this column and this row and you're doing x, th you know, this one times that one plus that one times that one plus that one times that one. And that works also, right? You end up getting this. So you get this system of equations. Um, so there, there, are, there are two ways to think about multi matrix multiplication. But really, uh, so far, when I write a matrix times a vector, the way, the way I like to think of it is these are the, um, the coefficients, the scalars of my linear combination. Okay? And the columns of the matrix are the vectors in my linear combination. This is telling me how many of this one do I take, how many of this one do I take, how many of this one do I take. Okay? Um, Let's go back to our, perhaps I go back to that food example. Um, let's see if we can make some sense of that um, in matrix form. So, um, so recall the nutritional data. Um, I don't want to write it all out again. Let me just, um, well, let me, let me write it out, uh, but I'll, um, I'll put it in a little table. Okay, so, um, well, how can I do that? So, so um, I have almonds. Here I have like, here are my headings. I have almonds and bananas. That's the reason I chose almonds and bananas. I can do A, B. And then I have, um, you know, fat, carbohydrate, protein. Okay. And for almonds, um, so here's my table. It's like a mini spreadsheet here. All right, so for almonds, uh, I had 12 grams fat and five grams carb and six grams protein. And for bananas, I had zero grams fat, 16 grams carb and one gram protein. Um, so again, I wanna know how how much of each nutrient? Well, I get from, you know, two servings of almonds and three bananas. Okay, what did we do before? We took uh, the almond vector, right? So this represents fat, carbs, protein, multiplied by two. We took the banana vector, multiplied by three, and um, then just added those together. Let's try to express that in matrix form now. Okay, what is the matrix form going to look like? So I'm, I'm writing matrix times vector. So again, my columns here are going to be, or my vectors are going to be the columns of a matrix, okay? So I have 12, five, six, 
and then I have uh, 0, 16, 1. And then I'm going to multiply that by, what am I going to multiply by? Can you, uh, can you write down what that's going to be? I'm going to write down a vector. How many elements will that vector have? It will have two elements, right? I put the coefficients in the vector, so I have two, three. Um, notice the number of columns in this matrix, that length there, had better be the same as the number of rows in this vector, right? The height of that vector. Those have to match up, right? So that, those are the only requirements. I can have more rows here, that's fine. But the number of columns in this matrix has to equal the number of elements in this vector, right? Um, so that's the answer in matrix form. And I just wanted to point out how it, it's like this mini spreadsheet here, right? So it's so like these, the columns represent, you know, the kind of food. And the rows represent, I guess, the fat content, con um, carb content, protein content. Okay, and what do we do when we multiply this matrix by a vector? We're taking um, linear combinations of the columns. Okay, just like we did before. So that will tell me the answer to this uh, this question. Um, okay, so that's basically um, all the concepts I wanted to introduce today. Uh, l let's just sum up though by, um, yeah, l let's review. I, I think we now have probably about four different ways to write a linear system. So here's just a summary. Um, so we can now write A linear system and actually let me let me go through in my head really quick um, uh, yeah I think I think there are four ways actually in four ways so what's what's number one well just as equations right <laughs> so as equations um, Oh, by the way, I should just point out in this example, right? So let's write out the answer. So again, it was yeah, 24, um, 58, and um, 15. And you can get this answer in two ways. You can take two times this column plus three times that column. That's how we're thinking about matrix multiplication by a vector. Okay, and that's what we did here. You can also get it by doing let's just think about it, right? So we have two, what is this two telling us? It's telling us how many almonds we have, how many servings of almonds, and the three is telling us how many servings of banana. So we can calculate each component individually, right? So at 24, you can think of as coming from, well, it's just doing, uh, so, so it's just representing the fat and the carbs and the protein. So at 24 is coming from, well, it's the number of fat, uh, uh, grams of fat in uh, two almonds. So 12 times two plus um, three bananas, three times zero, okay? And that 58 is coming from uh, two times five plus three times 16, okay? And similarly for that 15. So this is actually the standard definition of matrix multiplication you've probably seen, right? So it's this times this plus that times that in the second one, and this times this plus that times that in the third element. Um, but again, yeah, there's another way to think of it which is the way we introduced it, which is um, it's two times this first column vector plus three times the second column vector, which is like this, this interpretation here. And we get the same answer either way. Um, okay, really quick. <laughs> um, definitely going over time here. So um, we, we, we can write a linear system as equations. So here's an example. I'm just going to take the system from the first lecture that we had. Equals negative 2. And then what was it? It was 3x1 um, plus x2 minus 2x3 equals 5. Um, you, can, you can practice this too. So see if you can write this in as, as many ways as you can think of. <laughs> okay, so here's my system of equations. This was the one that we had in the first lecture. What's another way to write it? as an augmented matrix. 
what will that look like? 1, 0, uh, minus 3, minus 2, 3, 1, minus 2, 5, 2, 2, 1, 4. That's my augmented matrix. Um, number 3. We can write it as a vector equation. What will the vector equation look like? So remember what I do is I take this and I... I just take the x1 out because that's in every single equation and I multiply that by the vector 1, 3, 2. And then I have my x2. I'm thinking of these now as the scalars. Okay, the variables are now becoming the scalars and the coefficients are becoming the elements in my vector. So now I have a 0, 1, 2. I suppose I can just look here. And I have plus x3 times negative uh, 3, negative 2, 1. Okay, there's my vector equation. And what's the fourth way? This is as a, a matrix times a vector. So it's a matrix equation. Matrix vector equation, let's say. This is a matrix and there's a vector. What will that look like? Uh, what are the columns of my matrix? They're my vectors. 1, 3, 2, 0, 1, 2. This is not an augmented matrix. This is a different kind of matrix. But I don't have that red line. What am I multiplying it by? I'm multiplying it by the, the vector, the column vector now of coefficients x1, x2, x3 of scalars. And that equals this. And you'll notice what I wrote down kind of looks a lot like the augmented matrix. Okay. But we're going to um, start, you know, more consistently thinking about it um, in this way. Okay. Um, so in the next lecture, we'll continue talking about vectors and we'll introduce the idea of span. I'll see you then.